something else. And the next part is incredibly fun if you're trying to make, for example, product renders. And it is called light linking, okay? And to show you what that is, I'm just gonna duplicate this light a few times or at least once so I can show this. Let's make it a little bit smaller and let's make it a different texture, something purple. There we go. Now we have one light that is more bluish and one that is more purple. And let's add another object, Shift A, UV sphere. There we go, make it smaller and let's make this cast a shadow on our initial cube. There we go. And we may actually just have to crank down the strength of our environment a little so we can see that shadow a bit better. There we go. Right, so light linking, what is it? What does it do? How does it work? Well, it is something we use to either block a light from a light source or block a shadow. Either way, we can control which lights are being cast on which objects and which objects is casting shadows from which light, right? And that may sound a little bit weird, which is why I'm gonna show it, right? So this light is casting on the sphere and on our cube, you can see the shadow right there, right? So if I select my object, hold shift and select my light, we can open up the linking menu with control L and now we have a link receivers and link blockers button, right? And you will have to pretty much see that as the receivers means the light, right? So whether or not they're gonna be lit up by that light and the blockers are basically the shadow part. So are they gonna cast a shadow? So if we don't want this sphere to cast a shadow on that cube, if we just want the light to go through pretty much, we can just hit exclude there. Right, so now you can see that it is still being lit by this emission plane, but it's not casting a shadow on that cube anymore. Right, it can be very useful if you're having product renders that have stacked geometry or things in front and the back to create depth, but you don't want to cast a shadow. Right, then something like this can be very, very interesting to look at. Same thing for the actual light link, right? So this was a shadow link pretty much, which means that we don't have the shadow from the sphere if you want a light link. So let's say we drag this to the left a little bit. Let's say we only want one of these objects. I'm gonna give this a quick black material or make it blue maybe. Let's say we only want one of these materials to catch the light from a source right, from this light. Let's say we don't want the blue object to be lit with the purple color, right? Then we can just select it, hold shift, select the light, control L, and now we're not doing a shadow linking, but we are gonna do an actual receiver link. And then we can just hit exclude there, right? So now it is still casting a shadow on the cube. It is still being lit up by the right area light, but it's not actually catching the light from this source right there. No matter how close I'm gonna bring this, you can see it won't catch the light there. Now it will catch the reflections of course because that comes from the surface of our actual cube, but the direct source of the light will not affect this whatsoever, right? And that's very, very useful once again for products because we sometimes wanna see the actual color of the product while still lighting up the scene with a different color, right? To create a popping effect, to create contrast with the actual focus points, right? So this is very useful for that kind of purpose. Now that is pretty much light linking all you need to know. You can link multiple objects at the same time, like you would usually link stuff, select your objects, select the lights, control L, and then we can block them all from that light as well, for example, right? Very easy stuff, but very, very useful nonetheless. Now, something entirely well, it's not different actually. It's quite the same page. It is called light grouping, right? So we now have light linking and we also have light groups. And light groups is something you can find in the view layer. And that usually means that it is also something that is happening in the compositor window, right? So all of these passes, the light passes, the data passes, is something we use basically in the compositor editor, right? So let's open that up. Compositor editor, use notes. Now we can tweak anything we want post render, right? After render. 
So this is the place where we add glare, where we add more contrast, where we add an overlay image, right? For example, if we want that snow visual effects to appear on top of our render, this is the place we can add that later after the render. Okay, so if I hit render, just for a quick little test and set my samples a bit lower, let's do 24, why not? Render image. Okay, give it a second. There we go. If I now hit backdrop on the right, we can see our render there at the top of the render layer. So this is what it rendered out. And we can also just visualize this entirely in the background of our notes. Let's say this is not big enough. I'm gonna control shift click on my render layers and we can now see it there beautifully in the background. Right, so this is our final render and any tweaks we make right now will appear there as well. Right, so if I'm connecting these two lines, holding shift and right mouse, they are gonna connect there, beautiful. I can now hit shift A and search, for example, for a glare note. Glare, fog glow, usually works nice. Hi, and then we can set the threshold to be lower. Well, we don't really have any glossy surfaces right now, so this may not have been the best choice, but you can see we're getting a little bit more light there, a little bit of a glow next to the sphere and stuff like that. So any tweaks we make here is gonna be tweaked on our final render, right? So keep that in mind. Right, so how do we use light groups? So let's go back to that actual view layer tab there. Anything we enable here, let's say the mist pass, it will appear in this little row here. All right, so the same thing happens when we're gonna add light groups. If I hit this little plus icon, you can see a new button or a new kind of output, a new input is appearing in the render layers and it's called light group and it's basically the name of this light group there. So if I name this, for example, purple light, nothing happens, of course, because we have not assigned the purple light to any group yet. But if we now select that light, and I believe this is the purple one, and we go to the object tab, and we should be able to go to shading and light group. And this is also where you can find the light linking tab, by the way, so you can see which objects are linked to this light and also which objects are linked for shadow linking, which is none at the moment. But for the light group, we can now set this to purple light, for example. And if I now render this out, render image, give it a sec, and go back to my actual render. If I Control Shift click on this, you can see the different passes. And you can see that now our purple light output only shows the output that is given by the purple light, All right? So you may now wonder why the hell would I use, why don't I just use the final render? Well, this is incredibly useful because we can now mix different colors of lights, right? So let's say we want the blue light to be there as well, but I also want to test out a separate color that is going to be green, for example. All right, a green light, let's say, which I think we still have the shader there. Yeah, there we go, we still have the, image texture, so let me delete that real quick. I set this to green. And I think it is still in the wrong group because we linked this, of course. So let's hit Control L, link receivers and include. There it goes the green light. And now let's go back to that view layer and add a new group of lights for our blue lights. And let's add a new one for our green lights. Just like that, right? So make sure to assign them. So let's go to the object tab, light group, green light, and this one, let's transfer it to a little bit of a different corner so we can see it better. Link that to the blare lights. I can name this wrong, blue, <laughs> right? So let's go to the compositor tab there. Let's re-render this real quick. Two seconds. There we go. Control shift click. And we can now visualize all the light colors that we actually rendered out. And you may wonder why are they so blurry? Well, basically because they are not being denoised individually. The final image, the combined image is being denoised. So if you want them to have a denoise anyway, Hit Shift A and search for a denoise, right? It's that easy and drag it in between, right? Give it a second. 
there we go, a smooth image. All right, so this is our purple light. The blue light, right? Let's connect that to the denoise and the viewer as well. And the same thing goes for the green light, right? The blue light. And the green, right? So this is very easy if or very important if you want to test out different colors, different light colors, different kind of setups, right? You can link them all to a specific group. For example, if you want one render where your light comes from the back, like a silhouette, but you want another one where the character, your main character is being lit up from the front or the side, then you can create light groups just like I just did now. And you can test out the different versions in your render without having to re-render them every single time. Right, and we can now just combine this with a mix color. There we go. And let's just delete this for a sec. We can now just, for example, mix our colors there. Set it to 0.5, I guess. And that should give us the mix of those two. Right, duplicate this once again and crank in that green light as well. And we're going to have our final render. Right, so that's basically how light groups work. We can render out separate layers of our lights and combine them later and we can tweak whatever we want with this, right? So let's say I don't like the green part, I only want the green light to be different. Now what we can do is hit Shift A and search for a hue saturation, hue saturation value. We can just change only the green, the green value, right? So for example, cyan or darker blue or purple, pink, you know? It's very easy to tweak one individual color and at the end, just add that denoise note and you'll have your beautiful render again, right? Just something to keep in mind. If you don't know the final colors of your, of your products, of your scenes, of your objects, of your lights, then light grouping can save you a lot of time in the end. All right, very good, very beautiful.